Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Digium Live. I'm your host, Brian Ferguson, and we're really excited to have Rob Arnold from Frost & Sullivan, an analyst uh, firm here in the U.S., and we're uh, very excited to talk about um, the UC industry and where it is today. And uh, welcome, Rob. Hi, Brian. Thanks for having me. Um, great. Thanks for coming. And um, so, Rob, why don't you start just by telling um, our viewers um, what Frost & Sullivan does and um, what kind of industries it does its uh, analysis in? Sure. So we are a um, global uh, research and consultancy firm. Uh, we have approximately 50 branded offices around the world that is staffed by somewhere around 1,000 analysts and consultants. We have practices in uh, industries such as um, pharmaceutical and healthcare, energy, manufacturing. I work for uh, one of the uh, biggest business units called uh, Information and Communications Technology, so ICT. We provide a market share forecast and qualitative analysis built around uh, those statistical uh, outputs that we uh, conduct. Um, we look at um, a variety of applications and uh, products consumed by end user organizations that are in the UCNC stack. So those are either consumed as a service or a product actually, um, including uh, voice over IP, telephony, um, being TDM telephony, uh, multimedia conferencing, IM&P, mobility, and, and what have you. Um, that's the nuts and bolts of what we do. So essentially what I tell end users is we look at how people are working with and what tools they're using to do their work. Okay, great. So how about you personally? What, um, what kind of things of research have you done? So I, I actually started my career in telecom working for a global service provider, um, helping project management to deploy systems for end user organizations. And back then it was, you know, right around Y2K. Um, so it was a really exciting time and it's really never lit up um, like, like that before, but we're seeing a lot of progress and uh, that time frame really piqued my interest. So I evolved my career into the research side of the business of the industry. Um, some of the more rewarding projects that I work on involve end user organizations. We do some programs called um, uh, virtual think tanks where we get groups of, of end users together to talk about their adoption plans and, and their, their trials and tribulations and their successes in the UC market. Um, the, the other thing that we do that I find really interesting is we uh, conduct surveys around different technologies. And again, the, cha the challenges and the drivers for adoption of those uh, services and products. Okay, great. So um, let's talk just about the unified communications industry and what kind of things, um, can you give us an overview of what's going on in the industry and what are some of the trends that you've seen? Sure, well, I, I think everyone will talk about, you know, with this question, they'll start off rattling off, you know, cloud, mobility, software and services. And we're seeing all of those things. Uh, uniquely some of the some of the adoption patterns that we're seeing is that um, there seems to be pent-up demand for UC products and services but innovation is happening so fast and cloud is still new and scary to a, a lot of people um, so organizations are picking and choosing their spots and they're a little bit tentative about how they're going about adoption, but they are adopting it, but just not as wide scale as we thought it would have been a couple of years ago. Okay. So um, I know there's been a lot of talk about the popularity of mobility and with all the really cool things that um, phone systems can do now interacting with mobile phones. Um, there's a lot of people that say that the desk phone is kind of dying. That's a trend that you hmm. hear a lot. What, what is, um, what have you guys found? Yeah, that, that, I do hear that a lot. That's, that's pretty interesting. Our research actually shows that um, that's not necessarily the case. People are not throwing away their, their existing investments wholesale. And in fact, our research shows um, a single digit increase in the volume of IP desk phones shipped over the last couple of years. And we expect to see that happen um, you know, with a small incremental increase actually year over year. Um, I think in 2014, we were just about 20 million IP phones um, 
shift globally. And that has really been driven by uh, increase in SIP phones and in IP media phones. And so what that's telling to us is that the number of devices per user is actually growing. So they do have a mobile phone, but they're not ditching their desk phone. And that's because these newer phones and the backend systems uh, behind those phones are delivering more value to the desktop in terms of functionality. So the, the desk phone is not going away. The number of devices per user is actually on the rise. And another um, factor there is a lot of verticals and user roles and task-based users don't necessarily need anything other than a desk phone that's tethered. Right. Yeah, we here at Digium have found exactly the same same trend. You know, we have had growth in our phones um, ever since they came out, and so we have yet to see that. Um, so works for us. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So um, one of the other things that I've heard you talk about it is um, that's important is the user experience. What do you what do you mean by that? Yeah. So so actually, this dovetails uh, off the last question. Is you know, a lot of the um, the vendors and service providers have have really focused in recent years more on the user experience. Whereas in previous years, you know, say up to five years ago, the first 10 years or so of UC was really focused on network convergence and applications convergence, you know, and, and making things easier for IT. But that didn't necessarily drive adoption and utilization for the, uh, the end user base. So the focus has really been on making things easier to access and more intuitive. Um, not only that, but give users more ubiquitous access to their applications. Like we just said, they might have a desk phone and a, and a UC client on their PC, and they might have a, um, a smartphone or a tablet. So giving them the right amount of tools to take advantage of, to optimize their experience for who they are, what they prefer, what they're trying to achieve, and where they are at any given time. Yeah, yeah. I think that one of the other things that can can be a part of that is training as well. I think we've yes. we've seen that when our systems get deployed, um, when if, when we go in there, there are a certain number of the people don't use certain things that could help them. It's just they just didn't know that it could do that. So um, being able to take full advantage of your system is important, and get good training from your whoever's installing the system, your value added reseller, or your IT people is important. That, that's a great point, and I should have mentioned that before in, in terms of trends is, you know, it, it might be a little bit more on the video side, but I think it's coming more to UC is um, there's different names for these people, but they're, they're customer advocates. So they work with the supplier or the service provider, um, but they're an advocate for the end user customers. So they help to them to drive adoption and utilization, make sure that the organization gets the most out of their investments. So these are full-time people and their sole interest is driving usage uh, by the user base. Yeah, definitely important. You wanna get the most out of your investment for sure. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so another term I've heard you use is personalization. What, um, what, what do you mean by that term? Well, personalization is really, you know, something that we experience in the consumer world. You know, we can, we have the autonomy to buy the apps and devices that we want. And most professionals arguably have better technology at home than they do in the workplace. So uh, there's a lot of talk about BYOD, right? Bring your own device, but it's actually bigger than that. Cause if you're just looking at the device, it's rather narrow. It's really about bring your own technology, BYOT, or just leave the T off. And so that's inclusive of the applications and the devices. So the applications might be on the desktop or they might be on your smart device, things like file sharing or chat, and things like this that might be consumer centric. Um, so this is proving, you know, in the market that users want to choose their own applications. And IT has had a hard time managing that for, you know, a couple of years. And, and for a lot of different reasons, they want to keep a, you know, a finger on the pulse of what the users are bringing into their organization. Sure. So what we're seeing IT start to do is work with their providers to develop a somewhat of an application sandbox, almost like an enterprise app store. And these are a group of sanctioned applications that the users can go in and say, I'm working on a project to do X, Y, and Z. I need 
I need um, file share. I need I need a um, location based um, presence client where I can where I can understand where people are and when they're available. I need um, what have you a number of a number of different conference and collaboration and sharing applications. So they actually go to this sandbox to the app store and they can under a transactional model go ahead and provision the application themselves. So this gets IT, you know, off the hook in terms of workload. Um, and it also is very consumer centric in that the, the user is in control of the application and how long they use the application. Then they can go ahead and, and terminate it. Um, and the bill goes automatically to the end user's cost center. So it's, it's really truly the consumerization of IT but it's under IT support. It's not shadow IT because IT knows about what's happening there. Uh, these are some of the things that, that we're seeing in terms of personalization. It's you know, having more of a consumer centric look and feel uh, the way that uh, applications are accessed and used. Right, yeah, that's, that's very cool. So um, I guess one, one last question I wanted to ask you, do you see any other trends coming down the pike kind of as we Get closer to the second half of 2015. Um, anything new or different that uh, we didn't see in the first half? New or different? Um, you know, I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, development is really accelerating. Um, I think that some of the pent-up demand is is going to start to uh, to be unleashed. Um, a lot of the trials that we've been seeing with more advanced UC services and products with cloud UC uh, products and services. Um, we're going to start to see those be adopted in a more holistic way. So that's that's one thing. Um, th the other one is WebRTC. And I, I really think that now that we have a, a standard that developers and end user organizations and channels and integrators, all of these people that have an interest um, can move forward. And I think WebRTC is one of the um, drivers that's really going to push UC to the next level. Because now that we've already established the cost savings of, of UC in terms of network convergence and some of the end user productivity, things like that, now we can, we can put communications in app so that we can actually enhance the workflow in a real meaningful way so that people can communicate in context. Yeah. And I think that combined with the last thing that I wanted to talk about, analytics. I think the analytics combined with um, the more pervasive UC is going to help uh, organizations to uncover where the value is and identify their best practices, who's using it, what applications, and how. And um, what does that mean to the, the, the KPI that the business has selected as being important? And I think that's where analytics really starts to shine, but it doesn't shine until you reach a critical mass. And I think WebRTC and the pent up demand um, that is unleashed will help us get to that critical mass. Well, good. Yeah, um, we're definitely excited about WebRTC too. And our uh, our Respoke folks will be definitely yes. excited to hear you, hear you say that for sure. That, yeah. That's a cool initiative right there. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Rob, I definitely appreciate your time today. Thank you for um, joining us and spending some time with us. Um, to go ahead and definitely check out Frost and Sullivan website and see all the really cool things that they have there and the great research they've done. They're a fantastic company. So Rob, I definitely appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today and um, tune in for the next episode of Good You Mind.